We are here among 1,800 financial advisors, and all of them have one really big question. How do I stand out from the crowd? I'm joined today by Barry Glassman of Glassman Wealth Services. Welcome. Thanks. Great to be here. Now, you just finished a session talking about standing out from the crowd. Explain to me, why do all advisors sound the same and look the same? Advisors do a lot of amazing things when, it, when it's in the office, one-on-one -on -one with clients. And unfortunately, they don't share that with the world. And when we studied what websites, uh, what advisors on their websites are doing is they're really doing one of a couple things. Either bragging about how objective they are, or they become a chief economist. And in all honesty, what we discovered was in client meetings, they don't talk about those things. They come through for clients in unique ways and make them feel confident and comfortable about their finances. And I wish that more of them would do that in the outward facing websites and outward facing communications to the world. So why are so many advisors content in just being another face in the crowd? Well, it's, it's a couple of things. Number one, it's, it's just inertia. Uh, we've always done it this way. Number two is compliance. A lot of us came from a world where we were tied to a brokerage firm and the compliance issues there are enormous. But under the fiduciary standard, we're allowed to share who we are and be authentic about uh, things that we do for clients. Here's the big takeaway. Mm -hmm. Here's the huge thing. I advise people in the session this morning to show people, not tell them. So how that manifests itself is, as opposed to saying we work with executives on stock options, show them. Here's how we do it and here's the process we take clients who happen to be executives, this is the process that we go through. Don't tell them, it's a new world, show them. So one of the great avenues for showing is kind of your digital presence, but most advisors fail there. Talk to me about the failure and ultimately how to succeed. Well, I think that when, when you say advisors fail, it's almost the opposite when it comes to in-client meetings. The advisors here at, at this conference do amazing things for clients on a daily basis. What I encourage them to do is capture that, find out what are the biggest questions and concerns clients have, and then find authentic and creative ways to bring that to the outside world. And then by the way, people are asking about social media, that's the last step. Once you take what's amazing that you're doing for clients, you take it to the rest of your client base, then go ahead and feel free to tweet it out. It's an afterthought. So what's a creative solution you've seen work well? I'm a huge fan of two websites, two really creative websites. One's called Elance, and the other is called Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R. -R. And both are places where you can hire independent freelance people from around the world, really inexpensively, to take what it is that is your intellectual capital. Let's say it's a, a thought or a diagram or even cartoons we've sent out to clients describing certain phenomena. Um, and get that out there. And will the SEC mind if you send out a cartoon showing what Janet Yellen's up to as far as uh, lowering or keeping interest rates high? No, but your clients will embrace it, they'll understand it a bit more, and when you refer back to it a year later, when you're either right, wrong, or it's still going on, they'll remember it. Now, I think you're right on track, but usually what advisors tell me is, this is hard, it's hard to do all this. What do you suggest to them in order to kind of keep up and maintain all of this great content? It's, it's being aware. In client meetings, capturing uh, what it is clients are asking. So maybe in the lunchroom, have a whiteboard, and after each client meeting, dive into what were our clients' biggest concerns. And before you know it, this list grows and grows, but it doesn't grow to an infinite level mm -hmm. because a lot of them will repeat themselves. And what I encourage advisors to do, if they really want to be competitive, put that out there. What is the competitive advantage RIAs have? Oh, it's huge. It's huge. And unfortunately, it, it's, it, it's a shame we're not using them more. The competitive advantage is we're allowed to share. We're allowed to be authentic. We're allowed to communicate. See, in the brokerage world, you can't develop a website and have a daily presence. In the RIA world, you can. The scary part is, we don't because we're worried about compliance. I think that we need to shed that fear, take what's best about what goes on in client meetings, and just get that out there. If we do that in an authentic way, we'll have instead of 1,800 advisors doing the same exact thing, we'll have 1,800 unique forms of presence out there, um, and, and business will flow. 
That's really the goal, helping business flow. Barry, thanks so much. I think all these advisors definitely can learn a lot about standing out in this crowd. Great to be here. Love Absolutely. Investment News. Thank you. For Investment News, I'm Matt Ackerman. <laughs>